Hey GED students, it's GED question of the daytime. Looks like we've got a word problem. Let's check it out. It says a certain cereal company packages its cereal in cardboard boxes that are 15 inches tall, 9 inches wide, and 2 inches deep. Okay guys, I think we have enough experience with the real world to know what a cereal box looks like. I'm going to draw one. They usually look like that. I'm going to label the measurements that they gave me. 15 inches tall, 9 inches wide, and 2 inches deep. Okay, if the cardboard packaging material cost, ooh, that's a fraction of a cent per square inch. So let's see, 15 tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths, 15 ten thousandths of a dollar per square inch. How much does the cardboard cost per box? All right, don't panic. First of all, let's look at this phrase. How much does the cardboard cost? cost per box. How much does the cardboard cost? So in order to figure out how much the cardboard costs, y'all, I need to know how much cardboard I have going on. Nobody here has told me how much cardboard. I know the measurements, but I don't know how much cardboard. Let's think about where you put the cardboard on a cereal box. Obviously, you do not fill this three-dimensional cereal box with cardboard. It better be filled with cereal, or I'm calling the cereal company to complain. Instead, the cardboard is kind of wrapped around the outside of this three-dimensional shape. It's the covering. The covering on a three-dimensional shape is known as its surface area. When you want to cover up a three-dimensional shape, that's surface area. So when they said how much cardboard, they were asking me about the surface area of a rectangular prism. So that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start by finding the surface area of a rectangular prism. Now, great, great news. If you know how to solve this without a formula, lucky you, you won't need it. But for those of us who always forget, this is on the formula sheet. Surface area of a rectangular prism is two um, oh, I always forget what order they have the letters in when you're on the GED formula sheet because the order doesn't matter, so I don't care. But I do want to be just like the GED, so let me uh, Google it here, which is exactly what you should do if you don't have the GED formula sheet. Okay, go pause my video, go find it, go print it. You need practice with this sucker before you take your test. So GED formula sheet says surface area is equal to 2 length times widths plus 2 length times height plus 2 width times height. Basically, we're adding up the area of each of the six rectangles along uh, that comprise this box here. So I'm going to plug into this formula to, well, we said our length. Now, we don't have anything that's called a length, but remember that the three um, measurements of a um, rectangular uh, prism. They're interchangeable. Length, width, height. I don't care what you call them. If you call them tall, width, depth, it doesn't really matter. So um, we'll go length, we'll go width, we'll go height. Okay, so I get 2 times 2 times 9 plus 2 times that length was 2 times that height is 15 plus 2 times the width is 9 times the height is 15. And I'm going to just do that entire expression in my TI-30XS calculator. Since there's no letters left on the right, the calculator can handle the whole thing. So 2 times 2 times 9, close parentheses, plus 2 times 2 times 15, plus 2 times 9 times 15. And I do get 366. 366 what? 366 square inches of cardboard. I'm going to need to make this package. And now it becomes clear why they told me this other information. Notice it says if the cardboard packaging material costs this much per square inch. Look, for each square inch of material that I have, I'm going to pay this much money. Now, you might not know how to say this number. I even struggled with how to say it, uh, but you can still multiply by it, okay? If you pay this part of a dollar for every square inch and you're getting 366 square inches, you're going to take that 366 
and that's the number of times you're going to pay this crazy amount. And you might say, Kate, oh my gosh, that looks scary. Well, yeah, but your calculator will do the math for you. So I'm going to take that 366 and I'm going to multiply by 0 0.0015 or 15 ten thousandths. And I get this number, 0 0.549. Whoops. My mouth and my hands didn't agree, 0 0.549. Sorry, guys, that's the mark of an ADHD teacher. Her brain moves faster than her hands sometimes. Okay, so this is the number I got out of my calculator. Now, I need you to be really careful. Is this number true? Yes. Is this number correct? Yes. And yet this still wouldn't be the final answer. Why? Take a look at what unit we're supposed to be in here. It says, how much does the cardboard cost per box? This is a cost here. And we are supposed to know using common sense that our money system only goes so far. We only have so many pieces and parts of dollars. Well, we have tenths of dollars. We know how to break a dollar into 10 pieces. That's using dimes. So we can go to the tenths place. And we have hundredths of dollars. We know how to break a, a dollar into a hundred equal pieces. Those are pennies or cents. But we don't have any thousands of dollars. We don't have a coin or a piece of paper that takes a dollar and breaks it into a thousand pieces. And so we can't use this last decimal here. So we're going to round it after two decimal places. When you have money, round after two decimal places. We're going to consider this number that we're about to throw away and ask ourselves, is it big enough to matter? Are we halfway through our digit system yet? Now, of course we are. We're at five or higher. And so what we're going to do is we're going to bump this uh, number in the hundredths place up to five. And we say that's about 55 cents per square, oops, not per square inch, sorry, per box. And I hope that's not the real cost because that would be a lot of money in just the packaging alone. But 55 cents uh, to, to pay for the cardboard per box. Great. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop them in the comments and I'll do my very best to answer them.